state the principle of conservation of momentum. Now we know a conservation of momentum is basically the idea of having uh, no resultant forces acting on the system and if once there are no resultant forces acting on your system, that's when the momentum is said to be conserved. What we mean by that is that the momentum initially of the system would be exactly the same as the momentum afterwards, again, provided that there are no external or resultant forces acting on the system. Right? So you can say something like provided no resultant force acts on the system initial momentum is equal to the final momentum right and that should make sense because you know that uh, how is force defined force is just the rate of change of momentum which means if there is a resultant force acting on the system it will definitely cause a change in momentum of that system. But if the resultant force is zero, then there would be no change in momentum and hence initially and finally the momentum will be set to be conserved. Now, next part says that two balls X and Y move along a horizontal frictionless surface as shown from above in this figure. So there are two hard balls and they're moving along a horizontal surface in this direction. So this one is coming at an angle. This one is also coming at the same angle. Uh, this has velocity 4, this has 4.8, and these are the corresponding masses. And this is before collision. After collision, they both stick together and they start moving with a velocity 3.7 to the right. Ball X has a mass of this, velocity this, and uh, so these are the same statements. And the ball collide and stick together. After colliding, they have a velocity of this along this line. By considering the components of momenta along the line AB, right? Along the line AB as in these components of momenta. Right? So what would be these components of momenta? These would be the cos theta components of velocity. So let's call this V1 and let, let, let's call it Vx and let's call this Vy. So we want to calculate the angle theta, right? So we can do that because these components we know we get 3.0 for uh, the mass of x. So let me write it as from here, 3.0. We remember, we want to write the momenta. Momenta is what? P equals m times v. The co if, if we want the uh, horizontal momenta or the cos component of momenta, that's when you have v cos theta. So, in this case, we have mass as 3.0 for x and its velocity is 4.0, but in cos theta direction, right? So, that's for the first one. The second one is plus, it's still moving in the right direction. This would be v, uh, so the mass is 2.5 kilograms, velocity is 4.8, and then you have cos theta. This is all equal to the mass of this thing, which would be 2.5 plus 3, right? So that would be 5.5 kilograms times the velocity with its moving, that's 3.7 meters per second. Now from this, we can find cos theta and that would be equal to 5.5 into 3.7 divided by 3.0 into 4.8 plus 2.5 into 4.8 and theta is just cos inverse of whatever you get from this thing right and that would be uh, 32 degrees now by calculation of the kinetic energies state and explain whether the collision of the ball is inelastic or perfectly elastic so the collisions are said to be elastic if their kinetic energy is conserved, perfectly elastic. However, they are said to be inelastic if their kinetic energies are not conserved. Now, kinetic energy conservation can be checked by computing the kinetic energy of the initial system. Let's call it KEI. That would be half the mass of the first ball, right? If you go back here, we first compute the kinetic energy for this one, then for this one, and we add it. So that's before collision, the kinetic energies. And then we find the kinetic energy of this system. So this would be half... The mass of first one is 3.0, and then you have 4.0 squared, its velocity, plus for the second one, half 2.5 into 
squared, which would be equal to, if you do the math, this comes out to be 53 joules. Now, what about the final kinetic energy? That would be half times 5.5 times 3.7 squared. And do the math, this gives you 38 joules, which means you can see that the initial kinetic energy is not equal to the final kinetic energy, right? So this implies that the collision is inelastic.